Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Today I have a bunch of deadlock tips that are really going to help you get ahead of everyone else starting this game. It combines a few different shooter tips, MOBA tips, and also just general cool deadlock things that are unique to deadlock. So whether you're an experienced MOBA player but may not be the best shooter player in the world, or you're an experienced shooter player and may not have much MOBA experience, or you just want to know about the cool intricacies of deadlock such as some of the movement mechanics then this video will be for you i think there's a lot of cool stuff in here that even some experienced players may not be aware about so let's get into it let's start with a cool movement trick when you slide you have infinite ammo you can slide down any slope and that means you can combine it with the slope on the towers and slide backwards and have infinite ammo essentially when you destroy this thing you can keep going back and forth and keep going down like this and it allows you to do more sustained damage whilst fighting the tower without having to worry about running out of ammo. Many of that precious time when you have the lane to yourself is being as effective as possible. Now, you can also dash into a slide. So, you can either slide down a slope or dash into a slide. However, the action of sliding itself does not use stamina. Now, sliding gets even cooler when you realize how much elevation there is in this map. You can do a lot of slides all around and you'll realize very soon that you can get around the map pretty effectively just through sliding. Before we slide on to other topics, you can also use the sliding backwards trick on the patron to have essentially infinite ammo as you destroy it to win the game. While well, sliding is great to sort of maintain more damage and keep firing for a bit longer, eventually you will have to reload. And when that happens, you don't have to just sit there and reload. You can actually use most of your abilities whilst doing so. So, for example, I could be reloading but still hit this knock-up attack, or I could reload and use this teleport attack, and by the time the teleport's done, I can shoot again. So that's a really cool thing to think about. And if you're still struggling with ammo, there are, of course, different things like magazine uh, items items which increase the magazine size there's also a really cool item which you'll find in the weapon tab called active reload now when you fire and reload you have a green area in the reload icon and doing that will reload really quickly so let me just show you again when you hit this timer and it's really easy to do you'll get an instant reload essentially and you'll even do bullet life steal for a short time that's a cool item to potentially get now, items are really important in Deadlock. In fact, items make you really strong, and without them, you're going to struggle. So knowing what items to buy can be really useful. And I'll talk about how to know what to buy for each character in a second. But first, here are some standout cool items that you may want to use on any character. We did, of course, just talk about Active Reload. But another item which is available in the Tier 2 section is Fleetfoot. With Fleetfoot, you're going to be able to get uh, the same movement speed while shooting as you would while strafing. So if you come from Apex Legends, you know how important that could be. Basically increased strafe speed, pretty cool. But the most important thing, it gives you an active ability which allows you to basically run faster, which is pretty nice. Now, another really awesome item which I like to use a lot in the later stages of the game is Warp Stone. Now, Warp Stone will give you extra weapon damage alongside most of these items anyway. But it also gives you a nice little teleport, which can save your life. And the cooldown on that is pretty short. Another really, really useful item you'll find in the spirit section is extra charge. And not only does it give you more weapon damage, spirit power, and cooldown reduction, you also get an extra ability. And that's great. Like now, my one item has two uses instead of one. So that's a really great way to kind of increase your power, especially early game. This is a great early game item. Now, when you're actually trying to build the right items in this game, the best thing you can do as a starter player is actually click Browse Builds and then go to Public. And what you'll see is the most upvoted community submitted builds on Deadlock. And these are specific for each character. When you change the character, different builds will appear. Now, you may want to start with the top one or have a feel for a few different options here. And that's a great starting point to kind of jump into things without having to know specifically about what all of the items do. However, later on in the game, you may want to even build your own build, which is what I've done. Allowing to build your own items gives you a better understanding of what items could be kind of exchanged in different circumstances. Because in Deadlock, 
just like most MOBAs, the game is ever evolving. Uh, different characters in your game could get fed on the enemy team and that could change things. So keep this in mind. This is a great starting point, but it may not be always the best choice. Some community builds even give some really good information about what items to prioritize if certain situations happen. For example, this build here is really, really useful. It also gives you some good information here about which skills to upgrade first and give you some information about how to um, use each hero. So that's pretty awesome stuff. A really great starting point if you want to learn a new character is just to try a community build. Find one with a lot of information uh, and that will get, give you a really good starting point. Now, what if you feel like the build you're trying isn't really working out and for some reason you just keep dying? Well, at that point, you can actually click your damage history and see what damage is coming from where. How much damage is being dealt from bullets, the orange damage type, and what is being dealt from spirit, the purple damage type. And that will allow you to kind of decide whether you should focus more on spirit defense or bullet defense, both of which are important. But if let's say one player on the enemy team is doing tons of spirit damage and they're really fed building some extra protection against that in your game will help you to survive for longer one more thing i want to talk about before we sort of go into some more cool shooter things and moba things let's talk about the power of melee in deadlock melee in different games can really vary in its power but most of the time these days it just isn't that great but in deadlock, it really is. So you got to get into the habit of meleeing and also charge meleeing. This charge attack will do extra damage. And let's say there's an enemy behind the corner, right? Which we've conveniently put there. Obviously, if he's peeking this side, he is going to see us. But we can charge up this attack before we come around the corner. So we can be like this and kind of get him like that. So we can use that to initiate a fight and do 116 damage, which is kind of crazy. A normal punch won't do quite as much, but it is pretty good. Keep in mind that punching will stall the reload. So if you start punching like crazy, waiting for your weapon to reload, it's not gonna work the same as when you use abilities. Punching will stall your reload, so keep that in mind. But it's a great initiation tool and can often be used alongside different abilities. For example, Dynamo is a really great example of this. We can use this uppercut, charge a attack, and do a lot of damage to start off a fight. Or another great example is, let's say we are playing, uh, who should we choose? Maybe Haze in the early game. We've got the dart, which will send him to sleep. But if I shoot him once, he's going to immediately wake up. So I've just slept him, and I do six damage. I hit a cool dart, and all I get out of it is six damage. Well, that's not as cool as sleeping him and doing a charge melee attack to start the fight, right? Now, if you found any of these tips even slightly in impactful then you could consider punching that subscribe button because i will be posting more deadlock content and i'm also going to be streaming it live on twitch and you'll find uh, me dropping a bunch of invites live all throughout my stream so you can follow that there's a link in the description all right let's focus more on the moba specific and shooter specific tips that are really going to get you ahead in deadlock because there's some pretty cool stuff to learn so the objective, of course, in Deadlock is to reach the enemy's base by destroying their towers on each lane. And that's how you win the game, right? You destroy their base. But your main actual focus as you're playing is to get as many souls as humanly possible. And you get souls by killing the minions, right? You get souls by killing the minions, and that can be spent on more items to make you more powerful. So your main goal should be to get as many souls as humanly possible. Now, all towers players and minions will give you souls when you get the last hit on them however souls will also float up into the sky like that now if you let them float up into the sky you will get extra souls from them so you'll get souls from killing the minion and also souls for when it flies in the sky but if somebody else shoots that soul before you they will steal that extra soul from you so what that means is you need to make sure you hit that otherwise your enemies will steal it and on the other side of the fence, you need to try and steal as many souls from your enemy as possible. That way, you're going to get more fed in the lane. Like, your main goal shouldn't be to try and kill the other player and deal damage to them. Uh, your main goal should be to get more souls. And you do that by killing mobs and stealing their souls when they fly into the sky like this. It will be a red color. 
and then you'll deny them that extra soul. Here's another crucial tip in Deadlock. Now, if you played any shooter games, you'll know how important it is to use cover, right? The more of your body out in the open, the easier you are going to die. That's obvious, right? Um, and so you want to stay behind cover. However, the camera in Deadlock is pulling to the right more. Your body is on the left side of the screen. So you should always peek from the right side of cover this way you are going to have less of your body shown and you're going to see a large area as opposed to let's say you're peeking from this side right to be able to aim out here and see the enemy i have to have my whole body exposed so always peek from the right side and if you can't peek from the right side you can just dash over right let's say you're here and you're like you want to get a peek on the guy instead of just going like that which is going to expose your whole body just dash across so that then you can get an angle. Whilst we talk about camera angles, I think it would be great to point out how great the map design is in Deadlock. If you've got a lot of shooter experience, you understand how the sight lines work in this game. But to explain it for those that maybe don't understand, this here isn't just any random object. This here isn't any random object. All of these things are specifically designed to give you an option to move through the world safely right if i've got this angle here anyone standing in this open spot can no longer see me right this cover blocks this sight line this cover will block all of the sight lines down here this cover here can block this sight line right every possible open sight line a enemy player can have on you there is cover to protect you from right so i don't have to run along here out in the open i can use this cover and then I can dash over here and use this cover. And then I can dash over here and use this cover, right? I mean, it's pretty basic stuff for a shooter game. But understanding that and how always picking from the right side of cover is going to give you an advantage will give you a massive, like, advantage over any new player that may not understand these mechanics. And also, ramps come into play as well. You have an incredible head glitch here. We can shoot this tower and the, the hero up here on the enemy team will just see our head, right? Or we can crouch and basically they can't see us at all. So thinking about that and how the map is designed and laid out will really help you to stay alive for longer. Speaking of staying alive, if you want to push an enemy on lane, make sure you kill the minions first. Because if you run out here, right? If I run out here and I come here, look at how much damage I'm now going to start taking from these minions. Quite a lot, right? And another tip, before you engage on any fight, pay attention to this minion here. This is a health minion, okay? Okay. Now, the healing minion will consistently heal up other minions and the hero in the lane. He's got more health, so keep that in mind. But if you want to take out the enemy hero, make sure you kill that health minion first. Each wave of minions has one health minion. So if there are two waves on lane, you're going to need to kill two of them. We kill that guy first, and then we can go and push this guy, right? And we're not going to take as much damage, and he is not going to get healing. A lot of people will just straight up push you and they won't think about the other minions on lane how much damage they could do and also how much healing they can provide so always prioritize killing that healer before you take a fight and make note of how many mobs are on 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 the lane that could deal damage to you as well another thing is usually at the start of the game you'll use this shop to buy your items right but once your tower gets destroyed this shop will no longer be available However, that doesn't mean you need to go all the way back to the base to buy items. You can go into the underground and you will find another shop available right here. So this one can be used to buy items and it's going to save you time. So you have the option to go down here and loot this and then go back to your base or maybe even gank another lane. Whilst you're un in the underground here or whilst I'm in the underground, let's talk about boxes. Boxes can randomly have items. They could have souls or they could even have permanent buffs, right? And there's even these golden things here that will give you permanent buffs. So as you rotate through the map, look out for these things and always hit them. Always do it. And as you kind of progress through the mid game of the stage, uh, mid stage of the game, when you're rotating through the jungle, always kill these creeps. Just remember that it, it gives you extra souls, right? And as you're rotating through the game, you're moving throughout the world, always think about any mobs in the area that you could potentially kill that could get you more souls as you're moving on to whatever, you know, whatever goal you have in mind, whether it's to go help another player on another lane, whether you're just moving back to your lane, whether you're just pushing a lane and, you, you know, there's minions there, always 
try and prioritize dealing as much damage to any mobs as possible because getting more souls will get you stronger right so you can have all these items down here as you're rotating to the other lanes you've got all of this stuff it's going to power you up and more importantly allow you to get more souls now some of these things are pretty tough until you're fed you're not going to be able to take these out on your own so just think about can i kill these mobs quickly as i rotate if i can I can use all my abilities on them, take them out, and then rotate to help teammates, right? Instead of just, like, running out in the open and just crossing to the lane, like, be effective with your time and manage your time by, as you're moving, taking down mobs as you go. And that will keep you in the game and you won't lose out on souls and you won't be falling behind. Now, another tip is, if you are going back to base, you can actually open the map now, or the shop, Figure out whichever white item you, is you want to buy. And then as you're going to the shop here, and we go over this little barrier here, we can actually buy the item. And then once we bought it, we can just go straight back. We don't need to drop down here. I see a lot of people jumping down here. And I did it myself when I started playing. Um, but you don't need to do that. You can just stay on the zip line and do it whilst you're in midair, basically. Another tip I would like to say is actually jump into a private bot match open a private bot match and just explore the map like understanding what's on the map is going to help you massively um so that later you can rotate faster you'll know where all these things spawn you'll know where the mobs are you can see all these blue items on the uh mini map to kind of give you an idea but really just spend a bit of time running around the map on a bot lobby uh, and that will really help you. Not only that, if you put the bot difficulty on hard, they actually do a decent enough job of laning, which means you can actually have like a decent fight against bots and get to grips with it. If you struggle at the early stages of the game, play a few bot matches. Like you would think it's a silly thing to do, but it's actually going to help you get better at the fundamentals. It's going to help you to learn how to out farm the enemy on your lane, which is really important uh, to do in uh this game or any mobas really there's also these buffs in the center well kind of like in between each lane and they these ones will only last a certain amount of time so they're not like the permanent buffs in the boxes now i just, just want to point out a couple things when you hold down tab it gives you a lot more information you can ping somewhere on the map you can ping an enemy uh which is really useful you can also hold down the mouse 3 or the mouse uh, scroll wheel to give you a lot of options for ping as well. Now, when you do a ping, your character will make a voice line, but you'll also see in the top left of the screen who is making a ping, who is uh, calling it, and what they're calling. So keep an eye on the top screen. Like You need to pay attention to all of the information at the top and also the minimap as much as you can because doing so will allow you to know where your teammates are where your enemies are uh, if you're walking down a lane and you're like oh this seems rather quiet and then you realize you don't see any other enemies on the minimap right now then there's a good chance they could just come and push you you don't know right so always think about what information you have and keep an eye on that as you're playing that's a really important moba tip you can also see how much um information all of these characters have right you can see how many souls they have which is going to give you an idea of who's the most fed on the enemy team for example right now we can see this mcginnis has fourteen thousand souls they have five kills but you can also see how much mystic power they have how much vitality they have and how much bullet power they have so when you're dead and you have a long respawn time you can actually use that time to be like okay what are they doing what are they building have they got a lot of life still do they have any movement speed uh is there anything i can build to counter that and this comes into more intermediate play obviously you want to start with these sort of community builds first i can't see it from here and then later on you'll start to understand the different items and know how to counter all this stuff depending on how the game is progressing right that's pretty interesting stuff that comes into play just a uh, kind of typical MOBA thing I also kind of wanted to bring a little bit of an insight into the itemization in this game so you have these three different categories right you have weapon vitality and spirit at any one time you can only have four weapon items four vitality items and four spirit items so 
that is something to consider. You can't just buy a bunch of these items early game in this and get a bunch of weapon damage because you can only have four. Now, some items will build into stronger items later. For example, you want to build bullet armor, right? You have bullet armor at tier two and then improved bullet armor at tier three. And they build into each other. So you don't have to sell items later. But some of these items here do not have extra components. And later on, you'll need to sell them, right? There is something else to consider, though. This is the flex spots. These are flex spots that are unlocked when you destroy the enemy walker. So this big four-legged creature here is the walker. There are four on the map. And e killing each of these will unlock one extra flex spot. And having a flex spot can be really useful because it does allow you to sort of sort of start to scale in different ways. Like if you want to be really tanky, you're going to need a couple flex spots to get more vitality. Or if you want a ton of weapon damage, you're going to need a couple flex spots to be able to buy more than four weapon items, right? So you basically start the game by buying tier one items. Later, you'll start buying tier two and tier three. And then as you progress to the late game, you can start kind of leaning towards more weapon or more spirit or more vitality by taking advantage of those flex spots, um, which is pretty cool. Chance they could just come and push you. You don't know, right? So always think about what information you have and keep an eye on that as you're playing. That's a really important MOBA tip. You can also see how much um, information all of these characters have, right? You can see how many souls they have, which is going to give you an idea of who's the most fed on the enemy team. For example, right now we can see this McGuinness has 14,000 souls. They have five kills. But you can also see how much mystic power they have, how much vitality they have, and how much bullet power they have. So when you're dead and you have a long respawn time, you can actually use that time to be like, okay, what are they doing? What are they building? Have they got a lot of life still? Do they have any movement speed? Uh, is there anything I can build to counter that? And this comes into more intermediate play. Obviously, you want to start with these sort of community builds first. I can't see it from here. And then later on, you'll start to understand the different items and know how to counter all this stuff, depending on how the game is progressing, right? Just pretty interesting stuff that comes into play. Just uh, kind of typical MOBA thing. 